From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. I am Ben Hall. Good show tonight. Great night to talk about politics. So much is going on in both the Democratic and the Republican side. We have invited each side to come on. Tonight it is the turn of the Democratic Party. So we are happy to have with us the chair of the Democratic Party in Tennessee, Mary Mancini. Thank you for being here. Thank you for asking. As we are approaching both the conventions, yeah. Democratic Convention, Republican Convention, a big endorsement today mm -hmm. from Bernie Sanders mm -hmm. on the Democratic side. We can talk about tons of stuff. Yeah, so much. I want to ask you, do you think if it's Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, is Tennessee in play? Do you think it could go to Hillary, be blue? I do, actually. I think when you look at Tennessee and you look at who we elect statewide for the most part, we elect moderates, whether they're middle of the road Republicans or middle of the road Democrats. We like, we like people statewide who are reasonable, you know, we, that talk about policy. And um, so there's absolutely a chance, and it wasn't too long ago that this state went for blue presidential candidates, and we elected a blue governor with 95 counties. So, uh, yeah, it's absolutely in play, it, especially it, with Donald Trump being on the other side. It wasn't that long ago we, that we had two Democratic senators, a Democratic governor, a Democratic legislature. Now, we don't have that at all. It's very, very different. The supermajority, I'm sure you've studied this. What happened? <laughs> what, what do you think? Well, <laughs> what do you think happened? That's going to take more than an hour, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> how did well, we get? Know, how did we? How did we change so dramatically? Right. Well, it didn't happen overnight. Uh, it took it took a few decades. Um, and there's always that kind of pendulum swing from one side to the other. The biggest thing I think was when the Republicans regained control of the state legislature. Uh, they got control of redistricting as well. And so what they did when they redistricted all of the state house and the state, well, I'll give you a couple of good examples. So they redistricted so that they made a lot of the uh, House and Senate uh, seats as well as Congress um, from being more even-handed to being overwhelmingly Republican by stuffing a bunch of Republicans in there. So for instance, we went from having five Democratic congressmen to having two in right. one election cycle. Um, you know, here in Davidson County, we had three state Senate seats that were uh, pretty evenly split, right, in terms of number of voters. Maybe they lean Democratic, 51% Democratic voters, 49% Republican, and that was kind of like all three of them. Well, when Republicans took over redistricting, what they did was they put all of the Democrats in those two state Senate districts in two of the districts, and then they put all the Republicans in Davidson County in that third district and then promptly won that one during the last election. Uh, so there was a lot of playing with the numbers and playing with the voters. Um, and that's why, you know, part of uh, what I would like to see is some kind of national redistricting standards for the entire country so that politicians aren't choosing their, you know, your representatives, you're actually choosing your representatives. Which I've heard, there's been discussion about that. And of course, Republicans would say when Democrats were in control, they did similar type things, gerrymandering districts and that kind of thing. Do you think we're at a point where we could really do that? Obviously, the party in charge would be the party that would say, okay, let's change things. And what yeah. incentive does the party in charge have to change things? That's a great question. Um, you know, and Perhaps uh, it is that things are so polarized now uh, that the party that uh, becomes in charge will actually see that the only way to get back to actually producing and moving this country forward is to have uh, more have people have more of a say in uh, their elected officials and not have it be based purely on politics. Now that's not there's no guarantee, right? Because that's the conundrum. You you pointed it out beautifully. You know the party in charge wants to be in charge and they want to make it so that they have as much representat representation as possible. So so as we as we go into this presidential election, do you think? Hillary Clinton will be visiting Tennessee a lot. I mean, we see her in I she's Ohio. Been here, she's been here three times already. So, yeah, I, I absolutely expect to see her again. Yeah. And yeah. who do you think might be her vice presidential pick? What, what, there's plenty, um, and I'll, I'll ask you about Donald Trump as well. I mean, all kinds of speculation, and it's fun to speculate. But what, what, are, you, what are you thinking, hearing, hoping? Well, it is fun to speculate, especially for 
for the Republicans. <laughs> it's it's a get the popcorn <laughs> moment for us. Yes. Uh, and but well, for I mean, gosh, you've heard the same names that I have: Elizabeth Warren, Tim Kaine. Um, you know, every, the the same names. I'm blanking on who the other ones are now, but uh, I'll get I'll Julian ease in, I'll, I'll think, ease into yeah Julian, yeah, the, Julian Castro. Castro. You're right, right. Uh, but the uh, the oh the, the thing that I'm most proud of being a Democrat is that all the people that have been mentioned are extraordinarily well qualified for the position. Just like our presidential candidate, presumptive presidential nominee, is extraordinarily well qualified for the job of being president. So um, I don't think we could go wrong with any of those uh, picks that have been bandied, those names that have been bandied about. And as I said, okay, we're going to invite Republicans on as well, and we have invited them. They'll, they'll come on later. So the Republican convention is first. It is. Okay? It starts next week. It starts next week. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's any chance that the Republican Party would not nominate Donald Trump? And, and I mean, how do you feel when you, when you hear that kind of discussion as a Democrat? Would you prefer to see Donald Trump be the nominee or would you think that would be good? What, what are your thoughts when you hear those kinds of talk? that kind of talk. Well, look, you know, I mean, again, whoever, first of all, I don't think there's any way that the Republicans can keep him from being the nominee. I, I, I just can't see it. They don't have, they don't have the, uh, the, uh, the rules in place or the uh, process in place to do that. And clearly, Republican primary voters, time after time after time, primary after primary, caucus after caucus, voted for Donald Trump. So clearly, Republican primary voters want Donald Trump. So I don't see that changing. Um, it's it's a it's fascinating to watch uh, for us because again it goes back to um, you know quali qualification to actually do the job right and so we look at our field and we think well we're completely you know everybody that 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 ran is qualified when you look at the Republican field I think we'd be happy to I know personally that we'd be happy to run against anybody that they put up because our presumptive nominee has got s so much experience and she's so qualified to do it and she's so capable uh, that if it were not Donald Trump and it were somebody else that wouldn't be a problem. Now at the same time it's been you know well documented there's some unfavorables and and mm -hmm. and the the email situation and that kind of thing does that what kind of drag is that when, when you hear that people are are looking for something different. I mean, here's a name. She's been in politics for a long time, so it's a well-known name. Mm -hmm. And then the unfavorables and the, and the email investigation. What drag does that have on on the party and, and then the nominee? Sure. Okay, so when you're looking at who elects president, right, there's people like us, um, and I'm sure some of the folks out there, who are paying attention now, right, and they're I love Hillary Clinton, I hate Hillary Clinton. And those people in the middle that really do decide uh, the presidential race, um, a, the majority of them haven't really decided yet. So again, it's about, and I think for them, it's less about the, the noise machine that they're hearing from either side of the political spectrum, and more about the actual person and their qualifications. And, and so when we, when we get closer to November, uh, uh, clearly Hillary Clinton's qualifications, her experience as Secretary of State, her experience as Senator, her experience as First Lady of Arkansas, of a state and First Lady, you know, when President Clinton was President. Um, that's clearly, she's going to show that that experience is what needs to, w the kind of experience that needs to go to the White House now. And so again, you know, head and shoulders above what the Republican Party has as their presidential nominee right now. So. Um, I, I think it's it's a drag for us right now. We look, we hear about it, and we think, oh, this is going to be a drag. But the people that are paying attention are so polarized right now, um, and it's really those people in the middle that are going to decide the election. And they are reasonable people who like qualified candidates, and you know, they want to see people with experience in the White House. I think that is often true that people like us and maybe even our viewers they they are so dialed in yeah and maybe it's about six percent of the electorate is focused on just a lot of other things and then they they dial in toward the end mm -hmm. sure. and then the question is what does that six percent want I mean it could be this is probably gonna be a very negative race I mean it's gonna be the other person yeah. is terrible and and this person is terrible, and, and it's gonna be brutal and I just wonder 
what does that 6% at the end of the day want? It sounds like what you're saying is that 6% is going to want someone who's experienced or competent. You know, the other side might say they want to just change the system. They want somebody new. You know, and so I guess I guess it will come down to that kind of question. Sure, it will. All right. Okay. Yeah. Now, all right. We have to take a break. If okay. you want to call in, there's the number: six one five seven three seven plus six one five seven three seven seven five eight seven. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.